Okay, well since we're in the main hall, I guess we'll start there. Time to investigate the main hall. After all, there is a body here to look into. I look around the room, just to get my bearings. There are some stairs going up here, though that seems to be out of bounds for the game. The main entrance is here too. The butler appears to have gone back outside to wait for the police. The body lies before me. Whoever did it up did a great job. It almost looks like a real person. A real person who's had the back of their skull caved in. The body is wearing a very nice three-piece suit that's been treated very roughly. Whoever got to him must have had a fight on their hands. There are holes and tears all over. The man was also clearly quite well-to-do. A gold watch peeks out from under one of his sleeves. I almost don't want to touch the body. The effects are so real. If you need to search for clues here, ma'am, feel free. Thank you, butler. Well, I guess that's as much of a push as I'm going to get. I take a look at the watch on his wrist. It's definitely seen better times. Ha <laughs> ha! The strap is nearly broken off, and the face is definitely broken. A little blood has gotten onto it, on the strap and on the knob on the side. The watch hands have stopped moving, stuck pointing at 7 o'clock. I decide to go through the pockets of his jacket as well. After a few moments of rifling around, my hand grasps something. It appears to be a last will. Unfortunately, it's covered in blood, and I can't really make out what its terms are. What I can tell is that it hasn't been signed. There's a note at the top indicating that the latest revisions have yet to be reviewed. There doesn't appear to be anything else of note on this body. Well, Butler, I think it's time you told me what you know. Exactly what happened here. Very well. Here is the sordid tale. I was here when the Master returned from work at six in the evening. He was certainly planning on throwing a costume party tonight. All of the invitations to you were sent off ages ago. At 6.55, the Master noticed that we were dreadfully short of port for the evening. He immediately sent me to acquire more for the night. Obviously, I don't really know what happened while I was gone. I arrived back from the shops at 7.30. I entered to find the hideous scene you see before you. I called the police, of course. But then you all began arriving, and, well, you know where we got from there. Did you hear any strange noises when you were leaving? Any sign of struggle? If we assume his watch broke at the time of assault, it wasn't long after you left. No, I don't recall hearing anything unusual as I left. It was actually very quiet. And there was nobody here when you got back? No, I checked all the rooms and nobody was about. Are there any other entrances or exits? There is a back entrance, but it was still locked when I checked it. All right. Well, thank you, butler. Of course, ma'am. <laughs> oh, man, I was in the middle of laughing and sneezing at the same time. <laughs> Bless you, ma'am. Oh, thank you, butler. Well, I think that's all I'm going to get out of this place for now. Well, that was certainly a good place to start. Question is, where next? Let's go to the... I guess we'll go in order. The study. Time to visit the study. I think Isabella came in here. One of the classrooms has been converted for the evening. Looks like there are people relaxing all over. Someone even put a few pipes on a coffee table between some of the chairs. They probably haven't been used since I'm pretty sure there is a no smoking. This is a no smoking building. Isabella is sitting on one of the chairs, idly leafing through a book. I don't know if she's reading it or not, actually. Hey, Isabella. Oh, there you are, hon. Finally come to see me what I was up to. I've been looking forward to seeing you. So, have you discovered any clues? I may know some things you don't. The real question here is, how are you going to get me to tell them to you? Oh, I have ways of making you talk, Isabella. It's actually pretty fun playing the investigator. I always love the femme fatale types in the old crime novellas I've read. <laughs> Isabella, for her part, leans far back in her chair, crossing her legs and steepling her fingers as she looks me over. Oh, do tell, I'm all ears. Um, well, I guess I could, um, interrogate you? Ho oh, ho, does a little girl want to use a little force to come get what she wants? I do like a woman who knows what she wants. Isabella's teasing me again, but it does work well for a character like hers. Can't buckle now. That's right, Isabella. I do know what I want. I walk over to her chair, putting my hands on the armrest and leaning my face in close to hers. 
And what I want is for you to tell me what you know. Everything you know. Isabella smiles a sort of languid smile as she looks into my eyes. Well, since you ask so nice. So what's your story here, Isabella? Well, you know Mr. Body was my boss. We worked together for God's sake. I've been his secretary for three years now. Hmm. Did you have any problems with your boss? Of course not. We got along famously. Everyone knows he was always hanging off my every word. And was there anything else going on between you two? Hmm. I'm sorry. What? What, uh, uh what do you mean? Well, come on, Isabella. That's the oldest story in the book, right? Beautiful secretary and the older lecherous boss. So you do think I'm beautiful, eh? That's progress. I try not to blush. She's trying to throw me off the scent, which is proof that something is going on here. I decide to try a different tactic. Of course I do, Isabella. You're damn pretty. How long did it take you to have him wrapped around your little finger? Oh, not long at all. Wait. Fine. Yeah, we... messed around a bit. It was nothing serious, just a little harmless fun. Ha! I knew it. And did his wife know about this, uh, harmless fun? Well, if it's harmless, she wouldn't really need to know about it, would she? I figured. So, where were you around seven o'clock? Ugh, don't remind me. That was before we got here, right? You ask why Chad didn't come? Well, just ask the patrons at my cafe. They'll tell you why he didn't come. We had a huge fight when he told me he had to go bail someone out of jail. He left at seven, and I went home to prepare to come here with you. How far away is the cafe from here? I don't know, about fifteen minutes? Okay, one more question. Take a look at this for me. I hand the will over to Isabella, watching her reaction carefully. She unfurls the paper with a bit of disgust at the blood. She seems angry for a moment, but it goes away quickly. Hmm, he mentioned something about redoing his will. I don't think he knew which of his children he wanted to run his company when he finally kicked it. Roxanne was his smart girl, but Hillary, you know, Max's wife, was the eldest. Max's wife, eh? Hmm. Who was going to get it originally? I think Hillary, but he didn't really talk about it that much with me. Well, thank you for your time, Isabella. No problem, detective. Hope you figure out who did this and bring them to justice. Isabella winks at me and goes back to idly leafing through her books on her comfy chair. Well, there was clearly an affair happening between her and Body, but that's not necessarily evidence that she did it. I'll have to investigate further. Hmm. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of the other guests in this murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. Oh yeah, I totally heard his bodyguard wanted out of his job, but couldn't get out from under Body's thumb. There's definitely some dirt involved there. Well, anyway, that's another room down. Only question now is, where to go next? <laughs> I can gather the suspects make my investigation. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Let's do the kitchen. I think it's time to visit the kitchen. Maybe I can catch up with Rakesh. I wander down the hall into what looks like a little break room. There's a refrigerator and a microwave in here. There's even one of those little electric grills plugged in. I see Rakesh applying peanut butter to some bread slices at the counter next to the refrigerator. Digging around inside the fridge, I see a girl I don't know. Let me know when you find the jelly, Roxanne. Yes, yes, I'm looking! I don't know if they have any. How did you talk me into this anyway? Because I make an excellent sandwich. Hey, Rakesh. Ah, Anne. Welcome. I will get more bread. What is a kitchen without snacks, hmm? Who's your new friend? This is Roxanne. Apparently she was staying here in the building to sort out some of her affairs. Oh. And what affairs would those be, Miss Roxanne? That unfortunate murder case in the Great Hall is my father. He called me here under some pretense of having something to tell me. It was apparently going to be something about his new lover. Honestly, if he weren't paying my way through college, I wouldn't have listened to anything that old bag had to say. He was quite well-to-do. And how did you fit into his plans, if you don't mind me asking, miss? Hopefully I didn't fit into them at all. He was a terrible person, a womanizer and philanderer. 
You, s you still took his money to attend school, however. Have you seen the interest rates on student loans? Sure, I did what I had to, but... I hated that man. I hated him to his bones. I won't deny it. I've got nothing to hide. Huh. Roxanne slams a jar of jelly on the counter next to Rakesh and storms out of the room. Rakesh finishes making the sandwiches and hands me one. Well, Rakesh, what's your story? Did you know the man in there? Oh, yes. Well, as to my story... I'm not sure if you ever saw me around the office. I was Mr. Body's bodyguard. He did not feel I was necessary when he was at his own office. Still, I saw you a time or two. He was your boss as well, eh? Did you two get along all right? Oh, yes. He was a very... strict boss. You didn't like him? Oh, that's not true at all. Well, maybe a little true. I was not fond of him, but one does not need to be fond of one's employer to remain employed, is that correct? I suppose that's true, but surely you could have found somewhere else to work. Mr. Body was very... persuasive. You don't sound like a loyal employee. Perish the thought. At any rate, I did not have anything to do with this terrible crime out there tonight, that is for certain. Hmm. So where were you around seven tonight? What time was that? An hour before we got here. I was just finishing up with an art class. I was doing a bit of life modeling. I didn't know you did that. Well, art is a bit of a side passion of mine. <laughs> <laughs> we both chuckle at that. Mr. Bo- Oh, <laughs> sorry, Rakesh. Mr. Body said that he wouldn't need me tonight, so I took the opportunity. Just one last thing, Rakesh. Can you take a look at this for me? I hand the will to Rakesh, who opens it up and makes a face of the blood all over it. He had said something about needing to do something with his will. Apparently, Roxanne had been quite a bit on his mind lately when thinking about the fate of his company. She's a very smart girl, actually. Not like her older sister. Okay, well, thank you, Rakesh. Make sure to find me if you think of anything else. Most definitely. Thank you, Anne. Hmm, I think there was definitely more to Rakesh's relationship with Mr. Body than he's saying, but I'll have to figure it out as I go. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of the other guests in this murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. Oh yeah, I totally heard his bodyguard wanted out of his job, but couldn't get out from under Body's thumb. Definitely some dirt involved there. Was that the same thing? Hmm can't remember now. Anyway, that's another room down. Only question now is where to go next. Sitting room, I guess. Talk to Max. Ooh, I like this color. Looks just like our common room with a nicer TV and a nicer colored wall. It even looks like someone brought in a small bar. Upon closer inspection, it looks like it's got all kinds of juices but no alcohol. Which makes sense. This is school property after all. I make myself a quick glass of juice and scan the people here. Max is sitting on one of the recliners next to the, next to the TV, watching some kind of sports highlight coverage. A few other people are sitting in various other parts of the room, but they all seem to be nattering about nothing. <laughs> Kinda think of it. I haven't really seen all these other people much. Most of them must have come in here to discuss things. Looks like a bunch of them have juice glasses. Hmm. Hello, Max. Hiding out in here, huh? Well, maybe a little. I have my reasons. Well, speaking of reasons, maybe we should talk about your story here. I'm so all over this case, Max, and I'm gonna solve it. So out with it. Alright, alright. It's not like I have anything to hide, cutie. <laughs> Don't you cutie me. It's another girl in another game, man. You're not going to distract me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, Mr. Body has two daughters. His older daughter, Hillary, married me. Hmm. Shotgun wedding? What? No. Oh, please. Like, you're the marrying type, Max. Hey, I could be. What if I found the right girl? Or three. Exactly. Anyway, according to my card, I married her, so shut up. <laughs> Stay in character, Max. You were doing really well. You're really enjoying yourself, aren't you? You get into this sleuth stuff, don't you? 
Oh yeah, I used to love all those pulp detective novels. Back to you. Why'd you do it? Was it the money? Hey, the money was just a nice perk. I don't think that makes me a bad person. Mm-hmm. I take it Mr. Body was against it. He wasn't exactly thrilled, but he didn't object. His daughter's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. Hmm. So you didn't get along with Mr. Body? Maybe not at first, but he gave me a job at his company, and we've been fine ever since. I'm not his favorite person or anything, but we're not sniping at each other either. So where were you at seven? Hillary asked me to make nice, so I don't leave the office until then every night. You can check with anyone in the office. They'll tell you. So how are Hillary's finances these days? She's doing fine. Max looks away from me for a moment, watching the television screen. Okay, one last thing, Max. Can you take a look at this for me? I hand him the will. Max unfurls it, though he seems unfazed by the blood. Hmm. Was this on him? Yes, it was. It doesn't look finished. You were his son-in-law. Do you know what he might have wanted to change? No, he didn't talk to me about his personal business. Max's eyes appear to get misty for a moment before he looks away from me. I can't believe he was finally coming around. I was never in the will, you know. Maybe he was finally going to include me. You think that's what was going on? Thanks, old man. Thanks. Who was the beneficiary before now? I'm not sure. It's... I'm sorry, can we talk later? Alright, I suppose that's enough for now. Thanks for your cooperation, Max. No problem, Sleuth. Good luck on this case, it's a tricky one. He winks at me as I leave the room. Hmm. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of the other guests in the murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. Um... That Ferrari belongs to his son-in-law, right? Yeah, it was weird that it was gone so early. Usually he's at the office until 7 or 7.30. Hmm. Apparently someone left early to take care of something. Well, anyway, that's another room down. Only question now is where to go next. Okay, so it probably wasn't Max, because he wasn't there at the time. Um... Hmm, I'm trying to remember... Right, Isabella was arguing with Chad, supposedly. And Rakesh doesn't have an alibi. Hmm... Butler, gather the people. I think it's time we close this case. Very well, madam. I'm gonna get this so wrong. The butler runs around, gathering up the other suspects in this little mystery. Hmm. Tonight, someone in this room committed a heinous crime. Someone who thinks they've gotten away with it. Unfortunately for that person, I happen to show up. I've yet to meet a mystery I couldn't solve and a perp I couldn't finger. Isabella snickers behind her hand. I try not to blush. She's really quite terrible. And that's why I've brought you all here before the scene of the crime, because it's now quite obvious who the killer is. Which is why I'm going to save. <laughs> I... I don't really know. Who? Easy, Rakesh. I think Rakesh did it. Maybe I can get some points with him? I watch Rakesh standing in the crowd, shifting a bit nervously. He looks at me and smiles. I take a deep breath and start. It's not difficult to see. An elaborate party, a bunch of invitations with pre-written messages. A convenient excuse that would seem to put them out of the house at the time of the murder. The murderer is clearly the biggest liar here at this party for liars. Besides, everyone knows that in these murder cases, the butler did it. <laughs> His face. After all, can anyone corroborate where you were when you say you were out for supplies? You probably did leave. Only you did it after killing Mr. Body. What? Well, I never. I didn't do anything. Tell it to the cops, chump. I walk over to Rakesh while the 
Uh, while Dee Dee others mouth the butler, asking him a million questions. He doesn't look at me. His eyes focus on the mob around the butler. I nudge Rakesh, giving him a knowing wink as I nod over to the butler. He grins, but suddenly his eyes go wide and the grin falters. He points to himself questioningly. When I nod, he shakes his head vehemently, walking over to the other end of the room in a huff. So it wasn't Rakesh. Hmm. Okay. Apparently I'm not very good at picking out who it is. Okay, so it's not Rakesh. The Ferrari left early. Oh, I'm gonna get it wrong again, aren't I? Alright, I'm going to say it was Max. I take a look at Max as the people in the room wait for me. He gives me a smile and a wink. I take a deep breath. Not difficult to see. An elaborate party. Bunch of invitations with pre-written messages. A convenient excuse that would seem to put them out of the house at the time of the murder. The murder is clearly the biggest liar here at this party for liars. The one pulling the wool over our eyes from the very start. The butler. After all, can anyone corroborate where you were when you say you were out for supplies? You probably did leave, only you did it after killing Mr. Body. What? Well, I never. I didn't do anything. Tell it to the cops, chump. Max makes his way out of the crowd and stands next to me. You think it's me, don't you? Well... Oh, don't get me wrong. You're totally right. How'd you get me? Oh, so it was you! Sorry for cash for before. Okay, so it was you. You didn't know about the new will. If you had, you never would have gone after him. Some of your reactions sealed the deal. Right. That's right, because his, cause his wife would have inherited the thing instead. Oh, that should have been so obvious. Why didn't I pick up on that? Because I'm dumb. Oh boy. That's pretty flimsy. Oh, I could have gotten you to confess. I'm a hard-boiled detective, remember? Ah, <sighs> that you are. And we got points with him. Hooray! Either way, it's nice to see that you've got my back when the chips are down. I'm surprised I did it. I was looking forward to solving the case and being right. Thank goodness for quick save and quick load. Hey, I know you were right. And I'll spread the word after this if you want. Nah, it's enough that you know I figured you out. Let that be a lesson to you. Oh, I'll definitely remember this. Finally, the butler frees himself from the crowd, dusting himself off. He looks at me. I'm sorry, Anne, but you are incorrect. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you all for coming out for the Alpha Theta Rho Fraternity's Murder Mystery Evening. Pfft, man, that's a tongue twister. If you would like, please feel free to join us for our party proper at our house. Everyone claps loudly for the butler who takes a bow. People start heading out the door. The Latin house roomies gather in the lot. I can't believe how much fun that was. Did you see me in there? Definitely. Clearly you need to channel some of that all the time, Anne. Oh yeah, you were definitely working it. She wasn't the only one. Well hey, if you got it, flaunt it. Though I can't believe they made me the other woman for some skeezy old businessman. Well, if the shoe fits. Watch it, jackass. <laughs> Everyone laughs as Isabella threatens to bite Max, chasing him around the lot. And that was a lot of fun, to pretend to be someone else for an evening. I suppose that is what Halloween is all about, yes? I suppose that's very true, Rakesh. Nice work. Well, now that I'm done with pretending to be a sexy office worker, I think it's time to pretend to be a drunken vampire. Who wants to go get some research material? Here, here. Are you really just going to pretend to be drunk? Everyone just stares at Rakesh for a moment before we all head off laughing to the frat house. <laughs> and is that finally the end of our week? Yes, indeed. Well, I failed the first time at that mystery, but at least I got it the second time. And I got some points with Max, so it all worked out in the end. 